Hey gang, Chris Maholka here. Today I'm going to talk about epoxy. Now this is not about one brand of epoxy, but in general how to use them as a kind of a category of glues. I've been hearing people talking recently online about um, problems with bubbles and crystallization and different things, and I'm going to show you how to basically uh, reconstitute your crystal epoxy and also how to mix it and use it without creating bubbles in your final product. So let's get started on that. Now I tie a lot of flies, build rods and things, so I always try to buy in economical size containers, the larger containers like the quartz and the pints. And if these sit around and get cold especially, um, they will crystallize. Not particularly the part B, but the part A. So before you start doing anything with epoxy, you should check and make sure that your part A is all liquid. When you tip it on its side, it all drains away from the bottom. You can see there are no crystals and things in it. If it's gotten a little cold, when you tip it on its side, you'll start to see little lumps building up around that bottom. Those are just some of the components in the makeup of the part A. You don't want them lumpy. You want them mixed into your solution. Now, if it's just slightly crispy like this, or crystallized, the easiest way to do this is just to warm it up with a little hot water. Now, it's tempting to just put the part A in there because it's the only one that's got the crystals in it. But when you get ready to use your epoxy, you want both part A and B to be of basically the same temperature. So if you're going to warm up one side, you want to make sure you warm up the other as well. Now, the worst thing you can do when you heat this is if you take it out and it looks like things are going well is to shake it. All you do when you shake it is you introduce a lot of bubbles into this and it'll give you more problems down the road when you get ready to use it. The best thing to do is just start and rotate it like this and you'll see all those chunks down there they're almost all going away down into the rest of the part A but there's still one there's just a big one hanging up here so we'll just dip them back in again we'll keep them the same temperature after these have sat you can take them out and turn them after 5 or 10 minutes or 15 minutes and it is all liquidy. You're ready to mix. Now what do you do if you've got one that has sat around and your part A is completely solid in the bottom of the container? Now with most glues you'd think this is just a throwaway time but with epoxy it's not. So if you have a bottle of epoxy like this, part A that's totally crystallized, I usually find this about the time I'm ready to start on a project. And you can put it in water for an hour or two and rotate it and everything. Uh, but the problem you're going to run into is this could take a lot of time, a lot of effort. I have found an easier way, the microwave. Now putting it in a microwave might sound easy. But you'll find that most microwaves aren't tall enough for this to fit in. Next easiest solution, lay it on its side. It's going to lay in there on the turntable and turn and heat. But if you remember any science classes from anywhere in school, anything that's cool, when it heats, it expands. So if you had this laying on the side on your microwave turntable, after about 30 seconds of this warming up, it'll heat up, expand, and it will blow this cap right off the end of the container, and it will spray part A epoxy all around the inside of your microwave. Not a good concept. So here's what we do to fix that. First off, you need some kind of a container that is smaller to fit in your microwave. We'll fit in and we'll rotate. I'm just using this as an example. I usually use like a old dinner plate. Next, what you want to do, take the cap off. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to lay it down like this so it won't spray out all the liquid inside as it melts. Sometimes it still does, still shoots little spatters. So there's a solution for that, is we're just gonna take a couple folds of paper towel, put it over the top, and snap a rubber band around it. Just like that. It doesn't have to be tight, shouldn't be tight, because you want the gases that are coming out in the heat to get away. So we're gonna lay that outside like that, put it in the microwave. In two minutes, you're gonna have very hot, very liquid part A that's ready to use again. Now in this case you're going to have to let it cool down quite a bit before you can use it, but it will save your part A epoxy. 
Okay, so now let's mix some of this. Couple things about epoxy. There are the longer setting, like 30 minute set or longer, and things like rod finish, which will set in a few hours, or like the quick setting, like five minute. Now they all work on a thermal reaction. They heat each other up when you mix them. It causes a setting action. So what you want to make sure of is you've picked a, an epoxy that's going to meet the needs that you're using it for. You don't want to mix up a, a five minute rod coating epoxy unless you're just planning on doing one guide on a repair or something. You want to mix enough of it's going to last you during the time you coat the rod. In this case I'm going to mix some of this, it's about a 30 minute set because I've got a couple of projects I want to do. So we're going to start with the one of the two ways to mix. A larger volume for if you're doing something like a rod or a small volume if you're doing something like a couple shrimp backs and things. And there are different ways to mix this. So the few things you need to mix epoxy effectively are some kind of a container. You want it to be flat bottomed and fairly sloping sides. You don't want anything that's real tiny, narrow, and tall. It has to be where you can get access to the sides and scrape the sides well. Something to stir the epoxy with. Um, if you're trying to keep bubbles out of it, popsicle sticks are really good because they're smooth. Wooden coffee stir sticks work well also, but the wood has a texture which will hold little air bubbles and uh, tend to make more bubbles in the epoxy as you stir it. If I'm doing something small where I'm going to use a brush, uh, like on foil, I'm just mixing a small amount, I'll even use the back of the paintbrush because it's nice and smooth and doesn't put bubbles in. Next is you need something to hold some hot water to help get the bubbles out. I'll show you that process in a bit. And the same type of thing, depending on how you're doing it, either a little alcohol lamp. Uh, candles work, but they're a little harder to control and burn erratically. And some kind of a torch, either an alcohol torch that holds alcohol up and creates a little jet stream or other torches. These you have to be careful not to get too hot and scorch things. And then, if you're doing a small batch, some foil to mix on. So as a starter mix for a large quantity, we're going to use one of these little solo containers like you put uh, ketchup in at a restaurant. And then I'm going to use my wooden stick because I want to show you how to get rid of bubbles once the epoxy is mixed. So I'm going to take my part A and my part B. And this is, of course, way uh, unscientific. It's not by measurements by eye, but this is from a lot of years of practice. And I'm just going to put equal amounts of part A and part B in the container. Just watching to see that the line between the two of them stays right down the middle as I'm pouring. And you can see kind of there half and half. It won't stay there long. Then I'm going to start mixing it up. Now, may, make sure you mix whatever the time on the bottle says, 30 seconds or a minute. And you don't want to whip this. The idea is not to make mashed potatoes out of it. You just want it to be combined. I'm scraping around the outside of the container to make sure on the edges where there was one part or another, it gets scraped into the mix. Then I'm just going to go around and I'm going to let the part that's up on top drift back down to the bottom let it combine as they as it goes and you're still seeing some bubbles in there part of that's because of the wooden mixing stick holding air bubbles on it and we'll let it sit flat let some of the bubbles start coming out we want to make sure that we get it all distributed well so it's going to clear up nicely and set properly but i'm not being careful because i want you to see bubbles and there are your bubbles in there. And the first and the easiest way to start clearing them, just to take your little container like this and get a container of hot water and just set your little container of epoxy right in there. Now, can't see it at this moment from camera angle, but all the bubbles in that epoxy are coming to the surface and popping. Don't want to leave it set in there more than 30 seconds to a minute because you don't want to overheat it and have it start setting up. You do want to bring all the bubbles to the top. So after we've set it in there a little while, pull it out, let it roll around a little bit. That'll also help get the bubbles out. 
And then the professional rod builders and the guys out there will really know this next trick. When you heat epoxy, it gets thinner and allows all the bubbles to come to the surface and pop. So I'm using my little alcohol torch, heating the surface and allowing the bubbles that are working their way toward the top to go ahead and burst. And this is how you finish off epoxy when you want a nice bubble free finish. And this epoxy is ready to use. For mixing a small amount, a couple things you'll need are a piece of aluminum foil and a mixer. I'm going to again use the popsicle stick or the uh, coffee stirrer. With your aluminum foil, I like to make it two thicknesses so if I rip it I don't drip epoxy all over the place. But you want it to be smooth and flat. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to really work on getting the wrinkles out of it because every one of those wrinkles will put a bubble in your epoxy as you mix it. So that's pretty close. So now I'm going to take uh, my part A and part B. My dog's down there on the floor talking to me wanting dinner, so we'll make this quick. I'm just putting a little part A and a little part B out. Again, I'm matching the size of the puddles. About like that. And that'll do quite a few pieces of if you're doing shrimp backs or other things. Then we're going to take our stick and we're just going to start and we're going to go and kind of fold it back and forth over each other. And you want to scrape but you don't want to scrape it so much that you tear your aluminum foil. So I'm just working the, the different parts together. And you can see no matter how careful I go there's bubbles building up in it but we're going to deal with those here in just a moment. Now again this is a 30 minute epoxy so it's going to set quicker than a lot of things would, but not too long, not too quick rather. Okay, so now we've got it mixed. There are bubbles in it, and we'll show you how we're going to take care of the bubbles. And what we're going to use for this is a little alcohol torch. It basically light the top of it. When you squeeze it, air blows out this nozzle and blows a little jet flame out. And we're going to use it to heat this. Now there's really actually two ways to go about this. The other is with an alcohol lamp. This one tends to be a little more touchy and I'll show you how both of them work. We're going to heat this epoxy from below through the foil. So we'll light our lamp up there. And the hard part about doing this is not cooking your epoxy. We're just going to warm it enough so that the bubbles are allowed to come out of it. You warm it slightly and it becomes more viscous or more or thinner and the bubbles will pop come right out the top so we don't want to do much more than that on it since there are still just a few bubbles on the top I'm going to use my alcohol lamp and blow on it very lightly and those bubbles will come right to the top and pop now you can use any kind of little heat torch you want on this the main thing you have to remember is not to get it too hot so there's an epoxy that's basically clear and bubble free and ready to use. So now you know how to mix your epoxy. And you might be planning on putting it on a rod blank or a lure or a flyback. And since you've hung around with me here till the end, I'll show you how to correct that problem even if you still got a bubble in it, even when you're applying it to like a rod blank. Let me show you how that works. A technique for getting air bubbles out of epoxy on something like if you're doing a rod. So what I've got here is a bunch of epoxy. It's got a little bit of bubbles in it. I've got a little spot on the rod here. I'm going to add a little, say I've added a little bit of detailed wrap or something to it. I'm just going to hold the brush steady and let the epoxy go all the way around. I'm going to put a bunch on here so you can see the process involved here and why heat is your friend when you're doing things like rods and lures and using epoxy on them. So, now if you can see I've got a pretty big glob of epoxy on there. There's some bubbles in it. I'm going to use the alcohol torch or any little torch you have. Again, do not put too much heat on this. You don't want to damage the blank and if you're using graphite this works. If you're using bamboo or fiberglass this may destroy the blank. So use extreme caution. So I'm just going to take the alcohol torch and do some little puffs 
relight my torch. Little puffs of air out there at the epoxy and the bubbles are just popping, coming right to the surface and popping. The other thing it does is the heat liquefies the epoxy more and gets it to run around more evenly around. You'll see a bubble developing at the bottom or a drip. It's because I have a little bit too much epoxy on there. So by heating it up like this, you not only get the bubbles out, you find out if you've put too much on, you can go in and catch that drip. Now when that's allowed to cool, there's no more bubbles in it, it will uh, form a really nice smooth guide wrap or decoration or whatever you're doing with the epoxy. So that's how the professionals do it. It's how I do it, but I'm in no means a professional. But I hope this works for you. Use the techniques and uh, have a lot of fun working on lures and flies and rods and whatever you choose to do. Thanks for watching.